part two of our data center security video. My name is Dennis De Leest, Senior Systems Engineer at Juniper. In this part of the video, I'd like to take you through the announcements that we did as on RSA 2013, and uh, I'd like to do that based on the whiteboard. So on RSA 2013, we announced a couple of things, as you could see in part one of the video, and they basically take a different angle in data center security and solve one of the issues that we've seen in the, pre in the previous video. So what we announced is uh, Web App Secure. So Web App Secure is an acquisition that we did from Mykonos Software. And what it does is it launches tiny pieces of code into a website. And we can see the hackers while they're actually hacking the website. And while doing that, we can actually see what they're doing while they're doing their reconnaissance, planning their attack, and so, so forth and so on. It's pouring that into a database where we learn what the actual hacker is, which machine that it's using, etc., etc., uh, without relying on the sole fact of using a, its IP address. So, but we actually took it a step further than just profiling bad machines or bad actors. We actually took that information and now putting it into the SRX. And for the first time, we enable a regular firewall to consume a fingerprint feed from bad actors before they even hit your network. The second thing we announced is a product called DLS Secure, which is acquired from a company called WebScreens. And it rethinks the DOS issue. Because if we look at our typical DDoS pyramid, we can see on the bottom side that we have our traditional layer three flooding. And it's based on the fact that you would create 100 to two, maybe even 400 gigabits of traffic and therefore render a useless uh, service or useless website. Um, but in fact, it's really hard to create two to 400 gigs of network traffic and there are far more ingenious ways of doing a DDoS attack. And that's why the DDoS evolved into a new level, which is called the layer seven application DDoS attack. And it's based on the fact that every application has vulnerabilities and you just target one of those vulnerabilities. And therefore you can take a website down by targeting one of their vulnerabilities and a good example of that is doing something that's really resource intensive and therefore with a small amount of traffic I could take a website down really easily by generating a request which is generating so much uh, back-end resources of utilization that it, that it does the same thing, it takes a website down. If you combine the two, and that's the newest thing basically, you get something which is called a layer seven diversionary DDoS attack. And it's combining the two. So a good example for that would be the, uh, the Bank of the West about one and a half years ago. Uh, they were light on staff, it was between Christ Christmas and New Year, and what they actually had is they had a DDoS attack which was taking three to four gigabits a second on their network. And everybody was looking at a certain angle and saying, okay, what's happening to our network and why is DDoS, this DDoS attack hitting us? But that was just a, a diversionary attack. It was actually creating it deliberately so that everybody was focused on that layer three type of flooding attack. And in the meanwhile, they were actually very smartly targeting the crown jewels in the back and stealing quite a lot of money there. And it's called the diversionary DDoS attack and we see them more and more. What DDoS Secure really does basically, it's behavioral based. It creates a profile and it creates a threshold based out of the user surf activities. And it's, it's basically looking at, is this a mechanical surf action or is this actually a human doing it? And th therefore it can distinct human traffic versus for example, a script. And while a, a website is more resource intensive or the bandwidth is struggling or well, basically the availability becomes an issue, they can kick in and say, I'm raising the threshold and only human type behavioral traffic can pass to the actual website, whereas scripts and other attackers would basically couldn't make the threshold or couldn't make the mark and therefore get blocked. It's a really new way of rethinking an, an, an existing issue and therefore it's, it's, it's really nice. The last two, specificity and certainties. How can I make sure that I'm blocking the right guy and how do I make sure that I don't, if I take a block action, that I don't impact a lot of people. So if we look at those two, we have to make sure that if we block an attacker, we don't block 10,000 in the midst of doing so. And what I mean by that is we have 
uh, enterprises running proxy servers. We have entire nations that are shielded be behind a couple of IP addresses. So, as we learned from the past, relying on just IP doesn't get us anywhere because it could, it could block one user, but in the midst of doing so, it can take down an entire enterprise as well by blocking just a sole IP address. So we'd have to move beyond that and move beyond IP reputation lists which say this IP is 20 or 30 percent good or 20 or 30 percent bad because we cannot block that in our firewall. There's no way to define 30 percent bad. So what we've did is we cre we've come up with an ingenious solution to say I'm not profiling based on IP address, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the machine which is actually visiting me and I'm looking at the plugins and I'm looking at the versions, I'm looking at the language, I'm looking at resolution, I'm looking at about 200 different things that, that resemble a machine and one by one they're not that important but like a fingerprint altogether they make a unique stamp of a specific machine and therefore it's not IP relevant any longer. I can see attackers that are disguising behind uh, proxy servers and say that they're using proxy anonymizers and I can say they're coming from Sweden one moment and they're coming from Belgium the other moment they're coming from the US 10 minutes later. It really doesn't matter anymore because they constantly give me the same fingerprint because the machine is not changing although their IP is changing and therefore relying on just IP based blocking uh, doesn't help us in this equation. So this basically creates us a profile based on a unique fingerprint of a machine and we can pour that fingerprint into a database and that database has been named Spotlight Secure. That's one of the other announcements that we did on RSA. So we take all these findings from DDoS, from Web App Secure, and we take this unique profile that hit a specific customer, and we pour those findings into a central database where everybody can benefit from. And everybody can benefit from really means that we can feed you information from bad actors, proven to be bad actors, and take that into consideration. And you can make your decision now before they even hit your network. I hope this clears out couple of the things that we launched. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and till next time.